Okay, we're going to talk about the search for the perfect golf club by Tom Wishin. Tom Wishin is a golf club designer and has worked with many companies and designed many of the golf clubs that you may have used. If you want to learn how your clubs are put together and how they work, this is probably the best book to grab. Now, it is a long read, even though it's not that thick. It's only about 300 pages, but there's a lot of detail. Not a lot of pictures, but a lot of charts. He starts talking about the parts of the club. First, he talks about heads in general. Then he talks about shafts. He's got three chapters on the golf shaft. The main thing you'll probably get out of the shaft section is they're complicated. Chapter 7, he talks about putting it all together. Once you get past this point, you've digested the meat of the book. Everything else is land yab. It's good info, but if you only want to read the first seven chapters, you'll have the info you'll need about how clubs are put together. The final chapters have info for ladies, seniors, juniors, and the disabled, as well as some tips for tweaking your equipment. The first chapter on heads gives a history of the golf head. On page three, he talks about he has a little chart that shows you all the different parts of the head. On the next page, he has another chart that you should read as well. Then he talks about loft. He spends a lot of time talking about what he calls the dreaded vanishing loft disease. You know, lofts are getting stronger. A three iron used to be 24 degrees of loft back in the day. Now that's a five, six, or even a seven iron, depending on the manufacturer. And he makes a good case that it's a major problem. He talks about the 2438 rule. It's a rule that club builders use. The typical golfer can't hit an iron with less loft than 24 degrees or a length longer than 38 inches. What that means is a lot of people are buying clubs today that they can never hit. According to the author, you shouldn't have an iron in your bag with less than 24 degrees of loft. Anything lower than that should be a hybrid or a wood. That bit of info alone may make the book worth the money. He also makes a good argument. It's a technical argument. Why, if you're an amateur, you actually need a higher lofted driver because of the angle it comes out. He has a chart on page 16 that shows the effect of loft on distance. No matter what your swing speed, you get a little extra length with a higher loft driver. He explains why in very technical detail in the book. In chapter 2, True Lies, he gives you some more information about loft and lies and talks about the roll and radius bulge on the woods, the gear effect, and the difference between forged and cast clubs. Chapter 3, he talks about different design aspects of the clubs. He blows up some myths and does a good job of explaining what is and isn't important in club design. He then spends the next four chapters talking about shafts. There's a lot of good info, but it kind of comes down to being hit or miss with shafts. There are no standards, and you can't really compare shafts from different makers based on the specs. He does have a great chart on page 151 that shows the effect of shaft length on distance, and surprise, surprise, it's almost nothing. The difference between a 42-inch driver shaft and a 46-inch driver shaft is only 1.3 yards. 1.3 yards. But you will keep a lot more drives on the fairway with a shorter shaft. If you want to understand how your clubs are made, this is probably the book to get. It's a long book. It reads long, too. But it's not that long. It's only about 300 pages. There's a lot of technical info here. Just a lot stuffed into those pages. It's worth it to really understand how your clubs are put together. For no other reason than next time you go to buy a set, you'll be better informed of what you need to get and how to make some better choices. Again, that's the search for the perfect golf club by Tom Wishin. Mm -hmm.